Nah, son, baby. And this is another episode. Can't help but swing it, boy. Swing it, brother, swing. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Here we go. Microphone chat one two one two. This is your host, Nasan baby, and this is another episode of Swingers After Dark. And I'm with, you know, I, I'm with Orion. You know, I, I've known him for a while from afar. You know, he doesn't know that, but I know that. You know, I, I've seen him in a few places, and you know, he's doing his thing in the adult entertainment business with his website called The Fatness. Yes, the fatness, not the fatness, is the fatness. And he also runs other websites, you know, for women who were showcased on his website. And, you know, you, o- Orion is, is Greek mythology. You know, it is Greek mythology for the god of hunting, the hunter god, but he's not Greek and he's not a myth. You feel me? He's a man and he's the motherfucking legend because I went on his website, you know, it, it serves him right that his name is Orion, Orion, the god of hunting, because I looked on his website and I was like, damn, he got Pinky. Damn, he got Miss Cleo. Damn, he got Monet Divine. And those women who I just name dropped are legends in the game, in the porn biz. So, you know, Orion, let me know how yeah. long, how long have you been running the I- fatness? Because you're doing your thing, thing. You're doing your thing. So tell me, well, tell my listeners how long have you been running the website? I've been running it for about 10 years. And from there, I decided to also make... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. See, no, no. You, you, listen, listen, Ron. You've been modest. You've been doing porn since you came out the room, slapping dick to the nurses. <laughs> Ow. So keep going, keep going. He, ladies and gentlemen, he's been modest. Okay, we're going to stick with 10 years. Okay, keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing it for 10 years, um, started as a hobby, and um, it was just like, you know, I was just messing around with like, a friend of mine or whatever, and she had this brilliant idea of like, hey, why don't we record this, and I was like, alright, cool, I was like, and then I looked at it, and I was like, yo, this kind of looks kind of good, like, I'll get off of that, and then there was a website called Woo.com, which... Can you say totally that again? What website? It was this website, Woo.com, let's just say like, it was like the super early version of what you call a only thing. It it was it was okay. It made you know, it was like it did okay money. It was like a it was like a a fan site, you know, clip store type of website at the time. And I was like, all right, then let me, you know, you know, let's put some of this out, you know, with our permission or whatever. And all of a sudden like people started asking, yo, do you have a site? You know, we want to see more and all that type of stuff and I was like, Oh, all right, cool, like I got the skill to build sites. I got the skill to run servers. I know all their shit, right? And apparently, I guess I can, like, perform and I have a good eye for talent. So why not put it all together and get something started? So then I started with fatness. And then eventually I came across the path of other, like, talent, like, you know, um, Big Liz. I had her site for a while. Um, And, of course, the legend is super dumb. I ran her fetish site for a while. Um... And then eventually, you know, had a couple, you know, come and go, like Black Passion, Supreme Diva. Um, and now, you know, uh, I'm running uh, Poundheart, XXX.com, which is doing pretty well. Oh, um, shit, that's you too? Yeah, so I, so he films everything, you know, he produces everything. That's, that's Jim so, Dickens doing, right? Yep. Um, but I'm running the website. Like, that, that's, all on, you know, my system, my platform, that's basically running the videos and everything like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's just one of the many ways he kind of like, you know, monetizes his brand. Um, so the thing with working with me is that I'm very particular about piracy. I don't fuck with it. I don't play with it. I will not allow it. Do not come to my site to join my shit and fucking share that shit. I will find you I will take all this shit down. I will block you from every fucking thing possible. Right? 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's what that's what has uh, made even an ad band like the OnlyFans, or you know, you, you just you know, you spend a couple hours and boom, you got like something running or whatever. But people still be sharing, you know, stuff off of OnlyFans, you know, and it's up to you to kind of go and find your stuff and try to take it down. Um, or it's like, you know, you work with me, I run your site or whatever. Like, I'm always going to look out for your stuff. Like, almost every day. I take a couple, like, maybe like an hour. I'm just literally just checking all the places where your stuff is going to get released or, you know, where, where people share shit and I take it down. So, like, I don't play it. So tell me how your IT background had helped you in regards to making sure that nobody don't jack you. Yeah, she is, she is, she is. And, and listen, I know that you're into IT because I have connections. Anyway, keep going. Like, how, how did that assist? Because, you know, they, they say that, the, like, the techies run the porn business now. You feel oh, me? Definitely. Like, look, look at OnlyFans. OnlyFans came out, like, what? Like, maybe sometime last year, maybe a before, before that. It's already taken over the adult world. Almost every provider, sex worker, or, or you know, performer, they have an OnlyFans. It may not be there. So for some, it is their main source and only source of income. Some have, you know, pulled in a lot of money from it. Some are pulling a little bit of side money from it. So it is in the hands of the technology people. From my uh, IT background, it just made it so that... Um, one, I don't really have to depend on anyone to kind of do the tech stuff for me. Um, you know, and this is before the advent of these, all these other tools to help non-technical uh, sex workers, per se, be able to monetize their content on the Internet. Um, but also, it also gives me the advantage in terms of being able to be innovative and creative with how content is delivered in a secure way. Um, like right now I'm trying to revamp how I deliver video content to give a way better experience to the end user and also secure the content in such a way that if someone comes in seeking to find content to share is going to be a little bit harder. You can never really get rid of piracy, but you can mitigate it to a degree where it's difficult for it to get to a point where it becomes harmful. So I, I I see you you know you you got you got the you know the fitted on you know on, on some Mr. Market shit and you know oh I I understand it because you know you, you want to keep your identity concealed but have you ever thought if somebody try to perpetrate perpetrate the fraud and be you on some stolen identity shit by going to Exotica and, and be like yo I'm a Ryan this is me I run that shit I'm the leader of the fatness see my hat see see like have you ever thought that people may jack your style because they can't see you they don't know who you are you know i've never thought about it because maybe like i underestimate the significance of what i've been doing for someone to really care to do that like i had instances where i mean you got some sick motherfuckers out here so (laughs) that's true like they're not there was a situation where this uh someone from texas hit me up um and basically thought i was this guy out there that was trying to like you know work with them or whatever and I was like, that's not me. This is some dude kind of like trying to imitate me. He's trying to basically use my name to get, to get girls to shoot with him. And he was some dude from like Nigeria that lived out there that lives in Texas. And he actually was a member of my site when he was living in Nigeria. And then at some point he even contacted me for me to try to help him, you know, get girls to shoot with him. And I was just like, dude, I don't know you. I don't owe anything to you and I need you to stop. That's mm-hmm. it. I've never really had any other incidents, other incidents than that. So the, the fatness, you know, listen, yeah. listen, fellas, if you need a tutorial to fuck a big girl, check out the fatness because he's doing his thing. Like, he made Pinky squirt. <clears throat> you feel me? I've never seen Pinky squirt before. Pinky, I've never seen the bra squirt before. So, you know, you showcase the slim thick, the thick, the thick thick the BBWs and the SSBBWs. And for you slow motherfuckers out there, BBW means big, beautiful woman, and SSBBW means super size BBW. So what makes you go that route for the fatness? Personal preference, I've always been, you know, I've always preferred the, you know, the BBW. 
ever since ever since I started recognizing, huh, there's a girl here at that. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. you know, so I would say ever since I was like 12, you yeah. know. So I think it was just kind of like the natural, it was like the natural path, is, you know, if I was going to do the adult thing, which I never really thought I was going to do because there was a point in my life I was actually, actually used to be very religious. And then something changed, and then I just completely went to the other side. Shout, shout out, shout out to them BBT parties. Oh, anyway, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. BBT parties are very fun. I saw a lot of. That was another thing too, like you know, and then going to the BBW parties and all that type of stuff, and realizing that, um, you know, when I go to the parties with my other crowd, like you know, from like more my professional lifestyle, or whatever. Like, a lot of the women that I would see at these parties and stuff like that would never really kind of be my type, right? And they would like me, but I was like, hey, I'm not into you. And I started going to the BBT, BBT, BBT parties, and there was um, there was a Babs, and then there was another one, the Goddess parties, I remember. And then that's why I saw more of what I was, like, into, and then it really solidified, like, yeah, this is, this is 100% my taste. So how did you cross over from being religious to, you know, doing porn? Because that's elite. Like you did a you did a reverse. Um what's that broad name? Um uh, Cashmere. What's her name? Jasmine. 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 Yeah, you did a reverse Jasmine Cashmere. Like she went from snatching souls to saving souls. So how did you do the reverse? Um, for me it was I think uh I question a lot of the religious stuff, right? Because that's what I was that's what I was raised in. Um, and then I even tried different religions and everything like that. Like, you know, you can ask me a lot of questions about Judaism or Islam. I'll be able to answer a lot of questions. Um, and, uh, and then, I don't know, at some point, it just, like, at some point, it just, like, it just stopped making sense for me, the whole religion thing. And maybe because I was just younger and I just... I had a lot of questions, and I just kind of moved on from that. And I started, you know, kind of going into that world. So I'm not going to say, like, I'm not, like, no atheist or anything like that. <clears throat> it's just for me, the question always is, you know, um, the religions and the texts that were taught from childhood and up, you know, is this the true religion? Is this the truth about everything, right? Or is this is it, or is it just some contrived information? made just to control the masses. There's value in it, so I will say. There is. It's yeah, but, just, hmm? you know, I just want to know, like, yo, is this, really, is this really the true religion or is this whatever? But then with, with, with that bit of uncertainty then comes, like, yo, should I really not do what I really want, right? Like, is there really a reason for me to not do this? Is this really as wrong as they say it is? and stuff like that. And I think, like, if, if I didn't have so many questions, I probably would have maybe stayed religious, but it, it, didn't make, it didn't make all complete sense to me at the time. Yeah, because when I saw your name, Orion, you know, the, the Orion is part of the, you know, it's part of the it's constellations. The I thought you were on some Illuminati shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Orion. Yeah. Okay. So where did you get that from? Um. So, um. you know, uh, when I when I was in school, I studied a lot of astronomy and physics, and the Orion constellation was my favorite one. So that's the only real reason. No, no, no. See, see, listen, straight to the point. K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid. Just, just, just straight to the motherfucking point. So, how how do you go about? recruiting for the fatness because I've seen some chicks who are smashed and they try to play dumb. Like I know the truth, you know, you know what they say, you know, if, if the truth doesn't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the motherfucking rinse. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've been with a few chicks who were showcased on your website and they try to play it off. I, I'll be like, have you done porn before? And they were like, yeah, but I'm not telling you the site. And I'm like, motherfucker, I already know, but I'm not going to blow up their spot. So, where's your stumping grounds? Like, as Orion, the god of hunting, where and how do you scout? Um, it changes over time, right? Like, uh, you know, before it was through, at some point it was like through personal, uh, just personal interactions. 
um, there's various women I would meet. Um, sometimes it would, sometimes it used to be, even be like other dudes, like, yo, you know, this chick is hot. I think she'd be down for it. Um, and then, and then once I started kind of growing, right, in, in the variety, um, booking managers would hit me up and models themselves would, me, would hit me up on social media. So it went from me having to search to me getting the talent sent to me, per se. Nice. So had there ever been a time when, you know, you was fucking a chick and you was like, damn, I can't believe I'm fucking this bra. You know, like, because you, you have some quote unquote names on your website. Like I mentioned, you know, Pinky Monet Divine, you know, Miss mm -hmm. Cleo. Like, have you ever thought to yourself, because a lot of dudes, they would sell out their family, let alone their mother to fuck them chicks. So I just named and other <laughs> chicks. So I'm, real, I mean, real talk. So was there ever a point where you're like, damn. I'm fucking chicks who dudes want to fuck. Yeah, no, it was Pinky. Pinky was that person for me. And as for Monet Divine, I, we never had, like, an intimate scene. Like, hers was more kind of like, you know, um, what they call, like, um, I guess video vixen type stuff, right? It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, an actual porn scene with Monet Divine. But, yeah, no, Pinky. Pinky, because I remember, like, during my college years and everything like that, like, I used to get off to her content so much. It was crazy. I joined her site a couple of times and everything. And then, wow, like, I'm actually, you know, it was like, I'm actually shooting her. And that was, that was, like, I was like, okay, maybe I've made it to the pinnacle of this type of thing. So, you know, if I, you know, when I do retire, I'm like, all right, I'm good. Like, I've, I've, I've made it to the, I've made it to the, the highest point. I really don't make it in terms of a performer. Um, like right now, I feel like I really would want to be, I really would want to kind of like elevate in terms of like the business aspect of it and the technology aspect of it. Like I would love to make or build something that would be a, a, a very strong competitor to OnlyFans or something. That's where the real money is at. And then I have the skill to actually do it. Yeah, I mean, so why not? I mean, try to do it. I mean, you're the performer and you're a techie. So you don't have to outsource. You can keep everything in the house. Pretty much. Saves a lot of money that way. So who who is who is on your bucket list that you would want to play with? Like you, you can't fuck Jasmine um Jasmine Cashmere because unless she comes back. So who who is on your bucket bucket list? Um I have to I have to think about that. Okay, just give me one. Well what about what okay, what about Cherokee? Cherokee would most definitely be there, uh, though I doubt, you know, I doubt she would shoot any hardcore again, because, um, you know, she's running her own stuff right now, but Cherokee would most definitely be one. Um, i trying to think. Okay, well, Cher no, Cher so Cherokee is one of them, but were you, before you contacted, there. before you contacted, you know, the women who already have a name, was was it a lot easier or harder to get them to shoot? It it depends, right? So, um like Cleo uh Cleo was through uh, uh one of her one of her connections. Someone that someone that um was connected to her kind of hooked it up and stuff like that and we got to talk and then she you know, she realized I was good people and then she was like down for it. Because you know, Cleo don't really shoot like that, and she don't really just shoot for anybody. Um, Pinky was kind of like that happened through um, working with the guy who used to manage the butt for a while. Oh, 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 then, oh yeah, you, you smashed the butt too. Ow, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I don't mean to cut you off, good brother, but I just got to give you props because I remember. Listen. I don't know how you how you did it, but you lifted her off her fucking feet and was fucking her in the air. I got to give you props. Keep going. <laughs> and that's a lot of butt. They don't call her the butt for a reason. That's a lot of butt. And this man picked her up and fucked her in the motherfucking air. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, but also with Pinky, you know, it was, it was, like, it was kind of also too, um, you know, I also performed, but I also... You know, at a time was 
uh, helping them deal with some, you know, piracy concerns and everything like that. Because like I said, that's kind of like my area of expertise when it comes to this adult stuff, mm-hmm. is the piracy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So how do you, uh, how do you come up with, you know, how, how do you decide on whether you should fuck a chick with a condom or bareback? Because sometimes um, you have the, the sometimes you have the latex, and other times it's like fuck you, I'm gonna just it, fuck that chicken and nut in the pussy, huh? It's a combination of things, you know. Like I don't, I don't, I don't shoot bareback per se with anyone that doesn't have like a recent test. Um, and you know, it, it's a combination of things, but most definitely testing is at the center of it. You know, one was the last test rendered, you know. Um, you know, also kind of gives the type of lifestyle they, that they have or, or whatnot. Um, and, you know, if I have like one little like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, straight up latex. So it's like when, when doing porn, has there ever been a time where, you know, you got limp and you couldn't perform and he's like, damn, this fucked up the shoot. How do you get over that? Oh, man, you know, Sometimes uh, it happens rarely, um, and that's because you know usually the performers that experience that a lot are guys who perform a lot. They shoot a lot. This is like their main living, so they're probably doing like three, four shoots a week, right? And they have to in each shoot you have to bring your A game, and there's going to be a time where you know the body can't keep up with that level of demand. So because I control when I shoot and how many I shoot within a particular point in time, I can kind of prevent those issues. But it has happened before, you know, and it just makes a shoot take longer because then I have to, you know, take a little time and, and, you know, wait for things to kind of, you know, work the way it should, um, stuff like that. Um, That's about it, really. So was that what... No, let's keep going no, there's some performers, you know, one way to kind of also get around that is that, um, uh, and I did this one time, whereas the one time I had a situation where I actually got off too early, right? <laughs> and then, um, you know, I was able to kind of get it right back up and then just kind of shot a little bit more stuff just to get more time in and then just kind of edited it together where the, you know, the nut shot came at the end. Okay, so, so you're independent. So you... Independent, and I say that in all due respect because when people ask me, am I self-published? I say, I'm not fucking self-published. Anybody could publish a fucking book. I'm independent because in- independent means professionalism. Like, you have everything down pat. You have a promotional marketing plan. You have editing. It's like you have all the nooks and crannies like these big corporations have. And as an independent content creator, it- it's like, how do you... How do you go by competing against the majors? Because you're up there. I, I've seen your ranking on, you know, X videos and Pornhub, and you're up there. So how does it feel to know that your content could compete with the so-called big dogs until you get um, to that plateau, that point, rather? I mean, it's 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 a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Um, but I feel like the big dogs are better at monetizing, right? And so that is the area that I want to be able to be on par with them um, in terms of like bringing in some level of profit. Cause I do bring in, well, definitely do bring in money with this type of thing. Right. Um, but the big, the big, the, the big dogs, they bring in way more, you know, like these, these, these big companies, you know, they're probably bringing in like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, I think. But then again, you know, uh, the, the profit of adult entertainment has changed over time. There's a point where, you know, if you had like just a regular adult website or whatever, you could pull in like 300 grand in a year easily as a regular, smaller, independent company. And then there was a point in time where that got cut into like, you know, a quarter of that, you know, with all the, when the porn hub started coming up and all the X videos and all the, and all the, there was like the mega upload and all these like uploading sites and everything. And then that went down, but it, but it's coming back up. I've noticed it's coming back up. Like, I think that the impact of the, of the two sites is starting to lessen in terms of being able to monetize adult content. 
and also through their teaming up with the companies and the teaming up with the content creators to help them monetize their content. Like you can go on X videos and you can make money off your content off of X videos. You have the same thing with uh, X Hamster and Pornhub and all their related sites. And, you know, obviously, you know, you got the Minivid, Push for Sale, the OnlyFans. Um, so that's my main goal. But it, do, it does feel good to see that my content has a, almost the same level of appreciation as some of these big dogs. And do, do you get a lot of hate? Because you know what they say? They say, you know, you could be successful with a lot of enemies or you could be unsuccessful and have a lot of friends. And, you know, with success comes enemies. So do you get a lot of hate because of your success and your rise to the top? It's, ha- it's happened before. I will say it's happened before. Um, I often, I think I've gotten more, I've gotten some, I've gotten some hate, you know, this stuff with like some, you know, jealous guys. Um, I've even gotten some hate from, for some, maybe like one or two models or whatever. Um, and I've also ran into, I would say, I don't know what the right word is, issues, but, you know, uh, like if there's a producer that has some questionable practices, right? Mm-hmm. That you know, I'm not going to recommend a model to work with someone who I know has some questionable practices, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but this, on the same token, though, if I know a producer has, uh, he's, you know, he's about business, he's reliable, he pays his talent, everything goes good. Like I always mention any talent that I come across. Like, have there was there ever a time when you know you shot a chick and she was like. Nah, take that shit down. Like, how do you deal with that issue? So that's why you have release forms, right? But but listen, uh, listen, listen. When you're dealing with unprofessional motherfuckers, sometimes they be like, "Yo, fuck the is, fuck the the release forms. I want that shit down, not now, but right now." How do you deal with that? And I tell them, you sign the release form, take me to court. <laughs> No, nah, because you know, uh, you know, but you know, I do provide alternatives. I'm like, all right, if this is if this is what you really want, then, then this is how much you gotta pay me, because it's my time. I gotta, you know, I have to book the room. I have to do all this other stuff. I have to pay you. You pay this amount, it's gone. It's all gone. I'll give you a document to even basically release you from the release form. You're good. Because oh. I give them an out. I'm not like, oh no, I ain't doing it. I give them an out. I, I, right. Listen, I tell them, bitch, you got to eat that. No pun intended. But how how how, how <laughs> often does that happen? Rarely, rarely. The one is that if it's somebody who's never done adult entertainment before and they come to me and they want to work with me, um, I'm probably not the best person to start with because I will have a conversation with you for you to understand, like, you know, the impact of doing adult work, you know, what could potentially happen, the fact that people you know may potentially see it and all this shit. I go over that. And then if after thinking about it, you good, then cool, we good. But I had only two models where I had that conversation. They said they were good. The stuff goes up. And then all of a sudden, they have a change of heart. Like, oh my God, my boyfriend's on it. You need to take it down. He's going crazy. And I'm like, yo, your man's feel. I'm not responsible for your man's feel. That's your job. You handle that. If your man want to take it down, I want to tell him, if your man want to take it down, look, $800, you send that to me, it's done. And the mortal words of rally from the boondocks, Pay what you owe. You feel me? Really? Pay what you owe. So have there ever been a time when, you know, chicks who inbox you, DM'd you, or message you, and they wanted to do a scene, and you'd be like, you? You want to do porn? Like, I don't know you wanted to do shit like this. Like, how, how chicks ever surprise you because they wanted to shoot a film, even though they're amateurs? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I have that same conversation with them. You know what I mean? And, I, and you know, and there's a level of discretion that they want to respect. I respect it. That's why, like, I don't like situations where, you know, um, like, you know, I'm trying to kind of respect that person's discretion. And then you have, you know, some, you know, guys or fans or whatever trying to do everything and every anything and everything to figure out who it is and try to put it like, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, it's kind of like, all right, cool. You want, you know, you want to, you want to see, 
you want to see someone on camera, awesome. Don't try to fuck their shit up because they you see them on camera. That's that's stupid, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of guys, they want to see the girl next door get on camera and do some wild stuff, right? Because they've seen all the professional out there do the wild stuff. They've seen the escorts. They've seen the sex work. It's now, you know, all right, cool. Like this chick was just like a regular chick doing real stuff. It's not, you know, there's no acting. There's no bullshit. There's no fake moans and shit like that. Some real shit. And you want to go fuck it all up. But like, oh, I got to figure out who that is. Oh, I, I know. You know, being on X videos, like, yeah, you know, I used to fuck her too. Like, that, that's, that's... Yeah, that's corny. Like, I don't like when dudes do that. Like, when they go on X videos and they put chicks on blast, say their government names, I'm like, really? Like, come on now. Why are you going... It, it, it's, it's madness. A lot of... You can tell, like, a lot of these dudes were not raised in a household where they got to foot up their ass if they did some fuck shit. So, I think that's corny as hell. Real talk. Yeah. Yes, it really is. You know what I mean? It really is. It's kind of like, you know, enjoy the content, man, and you can call it a day. You don't you don't have to do all that. What are you trying to do? Trying to get some clout? <clears throat> because you happen to, you happen to, you know, have had a personal relationship or you messed around with this chick or whatever. Like, I remember one model, um, like, I remember I uh, put some content of her out there, and then it was just like, Dudes just one after another, like, yeah, you know, I smash her. I smash her when she visited, you know, North Carolina. Well, I'll visit, I smash her when she visited ATL. Like, <laughs> see with each other, like, you know, like. So, how you ever had a stalker on your hands as far as, you know, you laid it down, down, down. So good that, you know, she wanted, she wanted to order takeout outside of the shoot. How you ever had one of those chicks? Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that, that type of thing has happened before. And, you know, of, I've, I've learned how to handle those situations as well, you know, so, but I've gotten better at preventing that type of thing. And, you know, a lot of dudes want to know is like, how do guys don't bust off quick? Because I know like a lot of, these, like, it, it's hard to not come when you fucking a thick chick. You know what I'm saying? The thicker she is, the quicker you might come, especially when you've been eyeing this chick for a long time and, ex- and anxiety is a bitch. So how do you keep yourself from busting that nut so damn quick? I'm fucking up the shoe. Um, well, you know, the trick, the thing is, is like, you know, some guys, they want to go in hard right away. And, and number one, you know, there's a lot of, there's, most women don't like it when you go, like, you just, the first thing you do is you start trying to hammer away like a jackrabbit. And because you get so excited and then you end up like, you know, skiing off. That's where you, that's where you fuck up. Right, that's where you fuck up. You don't do that. You know, you start, you know, you start a little bit slow and you pace yourself and then you kind of bring it up. Um, you know, once you get to the point where you can control your heart rate and everything like that and kind of like that anxiety that, and then you just kind of focus on like, you know, the moment, then it's all good. And, you know, then, I mean, obviously, um, the person that's going to come the quickest, right? But most women don't care if you're not quick as long as you recover quick. And if you know you're a guy and you don't really recover quick and you really, you know, most definitely you're going to probably like end up smashing this chick that you really want and you want to impress her, then you probably are better off just kind of buffing, buffing one off on your own before you go see her because then you give her that really good like second look, you know? The pregame. The pregame, yeah. But nothing feels, nothing like that first nut with who you really want, really, like, there's nothing really beats that feeling. Though. Yeah, that, that first nut, like, you don't have to die to see Jesus with that first nut, so, you know. Hey, exactly. So, exactly. so tell the people all the websites that you run before we get out this beer. All right. So, uh, the active websites that kind of, that still get updated is the fatness.com, P, the, uh, the P-H-A-T, fatness.com. PoundHardXXX.com. Um, that is a hot site right now. Check that out. He's always coming out with some great new stuff. He's extremely creative. He finds like some of the best talent I've ever seen. Um, then there's Dime City XXX. That's more like the slim thick joints. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, not to cut you off, brother, but the the chicks that you got on Dime City. Mm 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 mm. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, as a BBW lover, right, if that's my primary thing, if I'm going to smash a smaller chick, she's going to be the baddest smaller chick that I could find, you know, in my, in my eyes, because that means I'm going to be more picky about a smaller chick. 
it's like the dudes, the dudes that like small chicks, and they mess with the big girl, they're a little bit more picky with the big girl makes you, you know, they decide to be with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, they're fat and fine. That's kind of like more like the video vixen spite, you know? So it'll be like a little bit of girl on girl, um, but mostly just like, you know, chicks twerking, shaking their asses or whatever. So there's like, you know, chick that may not do porn, but you want to see her like just get down, like all mech and shit. That's like perfect set for that. Um... Let me see. The Mexican uh, uh, gorditos. Huh? Well, the the Mexican gorditos. Well, how how you say that? Oh, Mexican gorditas. Yes. So MexicanGorditas yeah. dot com. Um, produced Mexican gorditas dot com and Mexican BBWs in action is produced by a guy in Mexico. He is a legend in Mexican BBW porn. He's been doing it for a very long time. And you know, he was he was a guy who was basically selling DVDs from out his house and. You know, you have to send him money workers and all that type of stuff. And then, you know, we kind of teamed up and kind of modernized the way of distributing content. Um, so he sends me a lot of content. So I'm always updating the site like crazy as much as possible. Um, and these are like, you know, these are models you're not going to really find shooting anyone else but him um, and his various, uh, on his various sites and his various platforms. But the platform that we share, yes, is MexicanGordita.com. The Mexican BBW's action in that com. And there's another one that I added it's called BBW, no, no, Beauty Butt Plumper. Also shot by another another guy in Mexico. And, you know, all the, you know, most of the girls are exclusive to him. Um, so I run, you know, I run those sites and, you know, like I said, try to make sure uh, they don't have piracy concerns, you know, they have the content management, all that type of stuff is run through my platform, which I built myself. Um, and then the, then I have, um, you know, sites that don't really get updated anymore. Like ladies, doctors, xxx.com. Still plenty of good stuff on there. Oh, that's, that's, that's one of my favorites too. Like, yeah. That's one of my she, favorites. Yeah. She lost, she lost mad weight though. But she's like, oh, yeah. damn. Like I, I love them <laughs> older cougars, them older myths, them older cougars. And, uh, Miss Superdome, uh, Miss Superdome booty, uh, dot com. So, you know, people like her fetish stuff and just, her, you know, regular stuff. She don't shoot for it no more. She's kind of going a different route. You know, you're going to be seeing a lot more of her doing kind of like more like YouTube videos and various other things on social media or whatever. Um, let me see. Princess Peach Excel.com, which, you know, it's there. I didn't really update it for a while. And then there's Bella SSBBW.com. So, it's an SBBW site with um, a chick she was known as Native Pair on Mercedes BBW. Mm-hmm. And so she wanted her own thing. She wanted to add like a layer of like elegance and style to it. So then came Bella SSBBW.com. Um, so you know it, it, it's it's like it's like a different look on like you know SSBBW content. Um, so, you know, at some point, you know, we're going to, like, we uh, probably link up and try to, you know, get more content for that site or whatever. Um, you know, she's very personable. She actually will chat with the fans and everything like that. Um, and, yeah, I think that's about it that I can think of. And on that note, this has been another episode of Swinkers After Dark, and this is your host, Nassan, baby. Check out my website at www.nassanblaze.com. That's www. N A H S U N B L A Z E dot com and check out my ebook, You, Me, Us, Them. The Springer Manifesto. It's on Nook, Kindle, iBooks, Google Play. Go get it. It'll make you say, uh, na 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 na, ow. And shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail dot com. That's swingpodcast at gmail dot com. And hit me up with any questions and or concerns that you may have. 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 Rate, share, subscribe, and comment on this podcast. Yeah, da, 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 dig. And on that note, until next time, peace. And don't kiss them holes in the mouth, baby. <laughs>